comic book creators square off in a No Limit Texas Hold'em tournament. Hey, this is Rich Duek, uh, writer of Sea of Sorrows, Road of Bones, uh, Wastelander Starlord, and uh, The Ocean Will Take Us. And uh, speaking of taking people, I'm going to take Ryland down in this poker tournament. Uh, you know, best of luck to him, but you don't stand a chance, man. How you doing, guys? I am uh, Ryland Grant. I am taking on uh, Rich Duick. Uh, today, hard name to pronounce, uh, hard uh, guy to face in a poker tournament. I love Rich like a brother. I think he is uh, one of the nicest guys in comics uh, uh, right now. It is a shame that I'm going to have to uh, murder him and uh, eat his corpse uh, uh, at the poker table. Um, sorry, Rich. There's nothing left to do but shuffle up and deal. Cards with Comic Creators Season 1 starts now. What's good, people? Jason Bennett here, Pop Code HQ, back with our second quarterfinal match in the Cards with Comic Creators tournament. In our first match, Chris Moses took down David Schrader. Today, we pit writer Rylan Grant versus writer Rich Duick in an Great battle that you're not going to want to miss. So it's time to shuffle up and deal. As you see, you start with, with 10,000 in chips. The blinds are 100 and 200. Um, I am not considered the dealer. I just have to be in there because I, I'm i the host of this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the game admin. Um, that's why I put myself at zero chips. And at least for these quarterfinal rounds, the blinds will not go up. Uh, they will stay they're stay they're stationary at 100 and 200. Um, because we couldn't figure that out last turn. And since they played it that way, I don't want to change it in the middle of a middle of a round. And uh, yeah, that makes sense. Just, just for yep. fairness. So uh so we'll go ahead and, and deal them out and then we'll start uh playing and then talking comics. Cool. All right. First hand of the second quarterfinal match here in Cards with Comic Creators. Uh, Flop comes Queen 5 4. Okay. Am I, I, I'm, I'm first to act, right? Okay. Yeah. I'm still trying to get used to this interface here. Yeah, yeah. What I like about it is that it seems simple enough where you could have. You know, some of your family members, if you're all getting together for uh, a Zoom meeting or something, you can just play around. Or, yeah. Um, mm, okay. uh, oh, interesting. Rich bets the pot, turns a three. And the river cards are 10. Mm. And Ryland takes it down. Queen high. A pair of queens. What's Rich got going on? Let's hear from the man himself. Hey everyone, so I have a couple of really exciting projects uh, coming out right now. Uh, Happy Hill is on stands. Issue one just came out uh, last week. Uh, it's a five issue series I'm doing with Joe Muldy, uh, Vacation Horror. Um, speaking of horror, I have The Ocean Will Take Us coming out from Aftershock. That'll be out in April. And uh, in between those, I got a little appearance in the uh, DC Valentine's Day special, uh, Strange Love Adventures, where I got to write. Uh, Flash and Gorilla Grodd going on a double date, uh, which was uh, a ton of fun. Yeah, I'm still, I, I, I feel like I'm still playing in slow motion. It's funny. It, it, it'll, I, I think, you know, once we kind of get in the swing of uh, playing oh, yeah. this stuff, it, yeah. it's it, funny. It's, yeah. it's fairly simple. It's not, I mean, I've seen a lot harder games to play. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen, I haven't played in a while either, but. Uh, this yes. 
I think I'm getting the hang of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, not not a whole lot of pressure. I mean, it's not. We were talking. Yeah, it's, it's just it's just your reputation online, and <laughs> no, uh, but it, it could it could be a rough year for you. You know, any kind of appearances you make, but yeah, I know you get you like were, people talking smack every every signing, right? I yeah, I, I saw you make a complete ass of yourself. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we were talking. Um, we were talking off camera, and I, I don't think I've played like a you know, organized hand of cards in, uh, man, 10 years, maybe, but. Wow. Yeah. yeah but you, you used to play like, you used to play like professionally, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, God, I, I, um, there was a, a period of my life where, um, where I made, uh, where I made my living playing poker in, uh, mostly online. And then when that got complicated, I, uh, I played in card rooms around Los Angeles um short period of time and you know I, I i won a couple of live tournaments and stuff like that that were reasonable um the thing is the games changed so much like back then it was more about personality you know mm -hmm. uh and and it, it, you know the math was always a part of it right. um but the math is like such a massive part of it now uh that it um i don't know like it, it, if i went and sat in a card room right now with some some real players i think i'd probably get you know probably get eaten alive but uh, I don't know. I had some personality. I had some swagger when I sat at a table back then. But, um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of shit that we all did 10 years ago, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, I'm not I'm not great at math, so you don't have to worry about me, I don't think. Yeah, it, it, it's, fun, it's funny that poker, um, you know, poker uh, sort of evolved with the, um, you know, how like analytics became such a big part of like baseball and mm -hmm. basketball and um yeah what happened there um I, 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 guess, I guess that was mine yeah I'm, I'm still, like, anyway so, so the analytics like but but live analytics while the game is going became such a huge part of uh of poker that um yeah i don't know it's a little boring i i i i, I, I more wanted to sit at a table and peacock a little bit you know <laughs> <laughs> I know the TV programs, you know, World Poker Tour and things like that, once they start coming out, it definitely changed the landscape of the card room scene. Yeah. And, you know, you start, now you're inviting, you know, people to watch it on TV or people to play it on internet. You know, it's seen a bunch of different evolutions. But, you know, when it comes down to it, I mean, people who played at card tables their whole lives are, are still playing and still making money. And it's... It's, uh, you know, there's, it, it takes a lot to take this on professionally, you know, to make it you know, your source of income and, um, but, you know, yeah. if you do it, you know, there's a lot of money to be made. That's for sure. Well, it was funny how I got into it. So I was, um, when I, when I first moved to Los Angeles, um, I was, uh, when I first moved to Los Angeles, I was subtitling for a living. Um, I was, you know, I was at the American Film Institute Conservatory studying directing and, um, I, uh, and I, um, I was subtitling, you know, to, to pay the bills, to, to buy my books, all that shit. And, um, and so I would, uh, I was subtitling like episodes of, you know, MacGyver and fucking Murphy Brown and Night Court. And, um, uh, if you, if you turn on any of the Seinfeld DVDs, um, I've actually, uh, I have, um, I, I subtitled, I don't know, probably 25% of the episodes on like the first, you know, four or five seasons of Seinfeld. Um, right. yeah. And, uh, but so you had to do one episode per shift. Um, and we, and we figured out that you could, you could come in, you could get about 80% of your work done, uh, in like the first hour. Um, and it, so then we would, you know, we'd go to the parking garage for a couple hours after that. <laughs> Uh, we'd get a case of beer and throw a football around and then we, you know, we'd come back a few hours later and just kind of stumble through the final 20% of our work, uh, you know, while whatever we had a buzz going or whatever. And, um, and uh, so we, um, uh, we all kind of, when, when the online poker thing like really got kicking, we, um, we would come back and we would do the final 20% of our work, but we would play online poker uh and it was just 
it was very quick that I was making more money playing poker online at work than I was actually making doing the subtitling. So I'm like, well, maybe I should just quit <laughs> <laughs> and, do, and do this full time. And, and, and that was how it right. started. Um, and then it, you know, it, it, it built into more of a business and it, it, uh, you know, it moved, uh, you know, it moved, um, I mean, you know, moved into the card rooms and everything for me. I mean, what, what, what really got me out of it, you know, despite things like the landscape really changing, um, was, uh, was, you know, the fact that I started getting screenwriting jobs. So it's like, okay, well, do I want to be a screenwriter or do I want to be a, right, right. Uh, an online poker player, you know? And here's what's going down with Ryland. Hey guys, I'm Rylan Grant. I am the Ringo award-winning creator of fine comics like Banjax and Aberrant and uh, uh, The Jump and uh, The Peacekeepers. Uh, and most recently, the Source Point Press uh, uh, phenomenon masterpiece, uh, Fit of Craziness, Suicide Jockeys. Um, you can get the Suicide Jockeys collected trade paperback, the season one trade paperback, collecting issues one through four that is available in fine comic shops everywhere. And via Amazon and, uh, and, and, and find booksellers now via Simon and Schuster on February 9th. So make sure you uh, go ahead and uh, get that. If you are behind on the Peacekeepers or the Jump or anything like that, um, you can go to my, uh, my backer kit shop. If you go to the jump2.backerkit.com, that's the jump one word and the number two, the jump2.backerkit.com. Uh, you can get all your uh, copies of Aberrant and Banjax and um, the Jump and the Peacekeepers. And, um, you know, a bunch of rare con exclusive and signed comics and all that good noise. It's a one-stop right at Grant shop. So check that out. Uh, and, um, yeah, thanks for watching. The life one way or another. And, and, you know, the, I mean, the, the irony of it is that, um, Hollywood is driven by IP, right? So now all these comic right. books are, are, are being, you know, optioned and, you know, turned into movies and stuff like that. So, <laughs> so uh, so, so that's funny, but, um, but yeah, so, um, yeah, comics is, it's weird to say, but comics is almost like a, a hobby for me, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, I, I know you, you have a, you know, another full-time career also. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, um, but I love it, man. It's like uh, comics kind of reinvigorated me creatively, you know? I mean. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it kind of like, I, I, I it's kind of like keeps me sane at my job because like I work in, um, like in advertising and a lot of times I'm like kind of called upon to write, you know, stuff that, you know, there's just not a lot of room for being terribly creative because you're, you know, writing an ad for like air fresheners or something like yeah. that. And, uh, you know, they're like, you know, well, we have to say that they're the freshest air fresheners in the world and stuff like that. So, um, so it used to kind of like stress me out a little bit, you know, kind of operating under those constraints, but, um, I found like being able to write comics and being able to have that as a creative outlet is like really, really helped. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was like Hollywood got to be so formulaic, you know, they're like, they're like, I mean, I had written in Hollywood for about 10 years before, um, ooh, well, um, before, uh, you know, before I started writing comics and, mm -hmm. um, interesting. All right. What are you going to turn up here, Rich? Oh, okay. I, I was, uh, I, I, I was, I, 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 I was trying to figure out what you had there. I, I, I did not count on that, but uh, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, 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 I might have took a couple more dollars off you. But I, I, I really <laughs> thought, I thought you, I thought you were going to turn up some queens on me or something like that. But that was, uh, mm -hmm. that was, that was a good hand. Um, you, you had me confused. Um. Because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, it, you know, it, it got to the point, dude, where, where you could like, um, you know, it was like you had, um, there were like five things you could write in Hollywood, right? And they wanted them written a certain way. And I got, I got really good at writing those movies. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, like I... It just it got boring and it got soul sucking. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I could phone those in, but it was like, you know, I might as well whatever. I I, I might as well be writing, I don't know, like a technical manual, right? <laughs> um, 
And and I, I and it sounds it sounds like an idiot because I'm being paid to write movies. So you know, I, I hate to be the guy that complains about that. But but I <laughs> I, I, I I had done it for ten years, and I was like, I don't know if I can do this for another ten years. And um, and so you know, co comics it, it was cool. It was like I you could do whatever you want, uh, any way you want, as long as it's good. Like people you'll find an audience for it someone will publish it someone will embrace it right like sites like pop cult hq will rave about it if it's good mm -hmm. and, that, and that was pretty amazing and so i made this deal with myself that okay if i'm gonna do if i'm gonna do this i'm never gonna tell a straightforward comic story right i'm gonna i'm gonna go fucking buck wild like i'm gonna double down on i'm gonna mess with structure and mess with unreliable narrators and uh and mm -hmm. ex experimental elements and all these things and um you know, and, and and so I I, I kind of went crazy with it. I mean, it's like um, it's the way to do it, man. Yeah, and 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 all the things that I'd wanted to do in in, in movies but couldn't, and, and, and you know, and then and then people fucking you know they love me for it, you know, and uh, and and it really kind of reinvigorated my love for writing, you know, in like the, in, in the best way. And so um, so yeah, I'm I'm thankful for comics. They kind of saved my creative life. I don't. I don't know where I'd be otherwise. <laughs> it's, def it's definitely a fun medium that you can you can be real expressive with. You can it's not really strictly defined in 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 how it in how it looks or how it has to be. That there is that almost you know whatever you want to make it. You know, there's an audience out there. Yeah. Those fans, you go to these conventions, you start seeing uh, the fan base, and 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 that I, that I would imagine is probably a different aspect for you as well. And you know, as far as screenwriting on one hand, but then when you tackle it in comics, now you actually see a fan base that goes out and you know, either conventions, shows up at signing appearances, goes to you know, comic book day events. Um, you see like a different i don't know the fan react in a different way than you than you probably would get as a screenwriter i would imagine yeah i i, I mean yeah exactly particularly i mean so much of screenwriting and so much of my career in particular is um is uh you know I mean, you're, you're writing things that your name's not on necessarily, you know, so, so you're certainly not seeing the fan uh, aspect of that, but, um, but yeah, it, it's, uh, it's great to, you know, in the age of Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that, to put something out there and, and, uh, and get immediate feedback. Right. And, and you hear from the people who love it and the people who don't and, uh, you know, and that's, that's interesting. And then, I mean, Rich and I have both done Kickstarter and Kickstarter is even more that sort of thing. Right. Where it's like, you're, I mean, you're actually making the comic book with the fans, right. Uh, it's not possible. Very, without very them. interactive. Very. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, yeah. We've, we've done a lot of stuff with our Kickstarters or like, you know, like halfway through the campaign, like we'll ask a question about like, you know, you know, who do you want to see, like, you know, on a cover or something like that, you know, or like, you know, and just or like you know give people opportunities to interact and and uh contribute to it and people love it i think that's a big part of why um why people get so invested in kickstarters you know like and they're like willing to probably pay a little bit more for a book than um than they've done in the store you know yeah than they would in the store because they feel a little bit invested in it which is awesome Yeah, there's, there's definitely not a lot of things that you can feel like you're a part of. You know, you can't, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I like this, this, I like this music act and, and you know, maybe I could be a part of, of what they're doing. And, you know, that just doesn't happen in this, with, uh, with crowdfunding and having that, uh, not only that interaction with fans and collectors and things during it, but, you know, uh, throughout. You know they, they're going to start sharing on their social media you know they they love seeing their name printed in the book and and there's you know i add something to it and it makes them a part of you know a comic book community that that um you know embraces fandom and, and, and celebrates uh you know the the joy of creating and, and collecting alike um 
you know, Rich, I wanted to ask you, um, how did you get tapped for the uh, Wastelanders uh, story you did for uh, Star Lord? Yeah, that was, um, I, you know, I don't want to say like totally random, but um, I, you know, because I had kind of been in touch with um, with Mark uh, Besso, the editor at Marvel, for a couple of years now. Um, just the sort of thing where I, I would be sending him, um, sending him my, uh, my work, you know, like, Hey, here's, here's my new book. And, um, we would just, we would just talk, you know, I'd ask him what he's working on. He would ask what I was working on, but like, you, you know, it can get a little tricky as far as like openings go. Cause like every, every time I would ask him like, Hey, do you have anything uh that i could work on it was always like you know not right now but it was a good relationship um so then with the out of the blue part it was like i had no idea wastelanders was going to be a thing or anything he just emailed me uh over the summer and was just uh talking about you know hey we're planning on on doing this series of books and i'd love you to write um write the star lord one if you're interested and I was like, yeah, absolutely. Um, What's wrong with that? Yeah. So, it, like, it, 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 like, like, I, I, I had, you know, couldn't have predicted that, like, that would be like the, you know, like the, you know, first Marvel book that I would, I would uh, ever do. But I was pretty happy to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's pretty fun. So, 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 tell me, like, you, uh, I, I mean, you, you, you met the, you met the editor at a con, or, or, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, how do you start those relationships? Because that's, you know, I mean, I'm, it, 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 I'm, I'm behind on a lot of this stuff. I haven't put, mm -hmm. you know, I, partially because, um, you know, again, I mean, I have a, I have a full time job, you know, with this movie, movie crap. I have a five year old daughter, so. I, I, I do comics, you know, as much as I can, but it's maybe not enough. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm wondering how those, how those relationships start and how they sort of develop over time. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, I, I probably, I'm not sure if I cold emailed him or if somebody mentioned him to me as like, Oh, you should, you should, uh, you should email Mark or something like that. But, but basically it was just um, reached out with like an initial email, just talking about like, um, I, you know, enjoying a lot of the stuff he was working on. Um, I'm like a big, big into, um, to Warhammer, like Warhammer 40,000. Oh, cool. uh, and he like Marvel had just picked up the license and he was going to be heading it up. So I think that might've been part of my, like, um, I guess you could call it like you're in as far as like why I'm emailing him, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I was just like, Hey, like I love Warhammer and, um, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and then it just happened that, uh, New York comic-con was coming up. So I was just like, Hey, I'm going to be at New York comic-con. If you're around, I'd love to, I'd love to meet up. And he was like, you know, it's always very crazy, but if I have some time, like, you know, let's, let's, let's do it, you know? Mm -hmm. So we met up on the floor kind of near the, actually, yeah, I, we didn't even set a time. It was like, I was kind of walking around, um, the Marvel booth and I happened to see him and I, I knew what he looked like. And I was just like, Hey, are you Mark? And he's like, yeah, you know, like, I'm rich. We, we spoke. And, um, yeah, and uh, you know, we just kind of talked about like, uh, you know, what he was working on, like you know, stuff that I liked about his stuff. I gave him some copies of my work, and and then yeah, and then it was just uh, we, we saw each other a couple of other times over that over the course of that weekend, at, like you know, various like parties and things like that. So uh, we so yeah, we just we just talked a little bit, but I didn't, I wasn't really looking like put any pressure on him as far as like, you know, Oh, you got to hire me. You got to hire me. It was just more like, he seemed like a really cool dude. And I just wanted to get to know him a little bit. And uh, yeah, we just kind of went from there. So then it was like, basically anything, anytime I have like a new book coming out, I'll just uh, send it his way. Like, you know, and, and like, hopefully he has time to, he has time to read it. it. You know, I'm sure he doesn't always find the time to read it. because those guys are super busy. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but you know, 
But it, it's really like someone once put it in perspective with me. They were like, you know, there's like less slots at like Marvel and DC than there are in like Major League Baseball. So yeah, yeah. You kind of have to take, you know, yeah, take the long view of it and and, well, and just yeah. You know, it's, it, I mean, it's gotten worse actually, you know, I mean, I was, I was having this conversation with somebody about boom. Um, uh, did you just, eh, did you just bet at me? Um, you did hmm. 200. You bastard. Uh, let me, I'll give, I'll give you that one. But, uh, it, it, with boom, it was like, you know, for, for the longest time, there aren't a lot of spots that a lot of bench slots at boom. Right. Um, yeah. but for the longest time, ah, you bastard, you just folded. I had pocket Kings. I hate uh, you. I had a horrible hand. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I probably just screwed you. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, less spots at boom. Yeah. Less spots at boom. But, you know, so, so th- they don't have a lot of spots, period. Right. But they would always keep, they would always keep two or three spots open on the end of the bench for guys like you and I. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. um, and, um, and, uh, but what has happened is comics has become one, the IP revolution in Hollywood, but comics has become so like in vogue. It's something that everyone wants to do, you know, like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, my, my friend, uh, you know, uh, uh, Chris Cantwell, who, you know, the, the halt and catch fire, um, uh, uh, showrunner and creator, um, you know, uh, you know, I mean, his, his, his dream writing Marvel books, you know? So yeah, give me, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, give me Dr. Doom, give, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. give me, give me Captain America, give me Iron Man. And so he's writing those things now. And so similar things. So it's like those those two or three spots uh, that would be that would normally be reserved on the end of the boom bench for guys like you and I. Um, now it's like Latoya Morgan, who is the showrunner at uh, at, at Walking Dead, is is doing a book there. Keanu fucking Reeves is doing a book there. Um, yep. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like so there aren't spots open uh, for for you know for guys like us anymore. I, 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 and, uh, in, it's like you have novelists coming in and doing yeah. stuff like you know. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, God, the, the, yes. Yeah. Yeah, the landscape has changed so so wildly. So it's like, I mean, the good the good news is it's never been like you don't you don't. I mean, you know, boom is amazing, and and they they certainly bring something to the table. But it's like the the market has changed so much that it's like you don't need boom anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, uh, you can you can do your own thing any number of ways. You don't need a gatekeeper to, to give you permission to tell your story anymore, right? So that's yeah. that's amazing and freeing and everything. Uh, but it's weird, man. It's, um, it, it just, you know, I, I haven't been in comics a long time, but just the amount that it's changed just in that time is like pretty, pretty fucking crazy, you know? Yeah, it's pretty, it's like, um, definitely like has changed and, and like, you know, not for nothing, but like the pandemic didn't really help either. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 yeah. I mean, you talk about, um, you know, I mean, because because we have all these we have all these creators on the writers block, and they talk about, you know, okay, how did the, you know, how did the, uh, how did we deal with the pandemic? That, that that was a big talking point for a long time, um, and and how did and, and everybody had the same story, and, and it was my story. It's like I, I just told you, okay, well, I haven't really done the work I probably should be doing in terms of like meeting meeting the editors and keeping in contact and all that stuff, and. And there were a lot of people like me who were like, okay, well, well, this is the year I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to go to twice as many cons. I'm going to meet as many people as possible. I'm going to sit down and, and, and go to the parties and do this and do that. And then, okay, is that what you want to do? Well, how about no cons for two years? You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and it's like, I'm even more limited in what I can do because again, like I, you know, I have this job that I have to do here and I have to be able to go to meetings in Los Angeles and I have a five-year-old that I love and want to be around and, uh, and, and all of these things. And, um, so it's like, I don't travel for cons too much anyway. Um, but yeah, like throw a pandemic in the mix and. Yeah. And it's rough because it's, it's also like, you know, you used to be able to like, if you felt like it, like drop, physical copies in the mail to like, you know, Marvel or DC or something that like they're all working remotely now. So it's like, yeah. it would just be like sitting in a mail room somewhere. Yeah. Since the pandemic, it did lead you to Kickstarter to, to learn that as a new platform and a new way to, to branch out and, and still connect with your fan base, your audience. And, um, 
you know, I, I know a lot of individual creators who recognize that they had to realize they couldn't be so dependent upon a publisher now mm -hmm. that it was more like, okay, I may have to take this in my own hands and run with it, you know, and how do I do that? How do I navigate that now? Uh, fortunately, there were crowdfunding opportunities for creators to be able to continue to to put out content and and you know still move forward and during like a pencils down you know time in uh industry yeah i mean kickstarter was uh, kickstarter was key for me i mean i i had um you know i i've told this story maybe i've told it on one of your podcasts or something jason but it was like i had um you know i had uh i had a book that was you know it was uh it was set to come out with a big publisher and um you know and uh and then suddenly i mean we, we we were like a few weeks away from announcing and i'm i'm in contact with you know three people at the company coordinating uh an announcement and and you know release stuff and all that and um and then suddenly it's um you know it's pandemic it's pencils down everywhere it's um uh, and then, and then with this particular publisher, everyone fucking got fired. Uh, and so I went from, you know, again, being in an email contact with three people like every day for, for, you know, a month to like, now I don't have a working email address over at the, uh, at the, um, you know, at the, uh, at the publisher. And, um, you know, and so then like, you know, then the release is in question, there's a new regime. Do they still want to do it? Do they want to touch the stuff that the other regime had? And, you know, eventually, the, uh, you know, eventually I got that book back. Similar thing happened with another book. Um, but it was like, you know, I, I mean, I'm like Rich, like I have four or five things going on at, at any time, creator own stuff. And um, and so it's like, what do I do with this shit now? Um, and Charlie Stickney had, uh, of White Ash fame had been trying to get me to uh, go to Kickstarter for the longest time. I was terrified of fulfillment. <laughs> Didn't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, but but finally he twisted my arm and and got me in. And uh, and yeah, I did three Kickstarters in a year. Um, and um, yeah, it was you know it was a uh, it, it was a hell of a ride. Like um, it's a lot of fucking work. Uh, I know Rich has done it for longer uh, uh, than I have and better than I have. Um, so he probably has more insight on that. Um, I don't know. It, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work. And, and like every time I'm always like, this is the last time. Like, I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I, 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 but I know with Ryland, with you jumping into it, you had a, you had a lot of support in the indie community with like Stickney, Russell Nolte, um, who had that experience and, you know, that you could come to the, to help guide you in the areas that uh, that you're you're still navigating. Yeah, I mean, li literally, all I did was what they did, and uh, and and Charlie in particular was just so wildly generous with his time in terms of you know holding my hand and you know telling me, oh, <laughs> don't worry, this is going to be okay, this is going to do that. Um, and so um, and so, yeah, it was. Uh, uh, I, I was very lucky. I stood on the shoulders of giants, uh, uh, you know, in order to. Um, achieve you know whatever small success i did um but uh but yeah um it, it, it's so much work i mean i haven't done one in a very long time uh um you, you know i again I, I did i don't think i've done one since like summer of last year and it was because you know i did i did, I did three in a year i was so fucking burnt out um that i just didn't i didn't know what to do with myself you know um yeah. it's like you really have to be like like fulfill like almost all the roles as far as like you know you have you have to make the thing number one but you also have to you know one man band yeah market it and produce it and like all that stuff it's it's a lot of work like I'm sorry. Right, and i know there were times too with uh having to make sure that the printers could keep up with it because a lot of people went to kickstarter and then so now orders started getting backed up and they had a smaller staff, you know, or at a time or, you know, whatever, whatever the case was that, uh, yeah, I mean, that kind of threw a wrench in things too. Then, um, well, I mean, it's what's happening right now is there's a, um, there was like a massive paper shortage happening right now. There are a lot of people that can't get right, books. backing boards or something. Well, yeah. no, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I'm talking about the, the literal paper that they print the comic books. On. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. It's, um, like you know they, they just they don't they don't 
they don't have enough of it at this point. Yeah. Um, There's also like staffing issues at the printing places because a lot of people calling out sick and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of times they can't even, um, you know, even if they have the paper and everything, they don't have enough people to like, um, yeah, you know, like r- r- even like run the presses, which is Just like physically do the work. Yeah. Yeah. Scary river card. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't see. Uh, let me let's do this. A pop bet by Riley. All from Rich. Ah, uh, well. Chop it up. <laughs> Yeah, he he, uh, he he drew me out. He yeah. drew me out. I had him in that five team and saved his ass. Five, yeah. Nice, yeah. That, 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 nice, nice thing. But but you, you had the ace. I mean, you were you were uh, yeah. you, were, you were you were betting like you should. Um, I, I was hoping you had it, but uh, but yeah. All right. Well, there we go. He's not dead yet. <laughs> Yeah, it's been like a really crazy, crazy ride these past couple of years, just because of like, you know, every, and like the funny thing is, is that I think at the beginning, it was very like doom and gloom. Like it was like diamond shutting down, comic stores are going to go out of business. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, know, industry is not going to survive. And like it turned out that actually had like, some of some of its you know best years yeah well, like, it, it, yeah it, oh boy oh wow. there's an all in bet <laughs> I, I i love the graphic and i and i yeah. like that he was he's like telling a story like pulling my attention and then he just slips the all in in there that, that was we, crappy, did, that. we didn't have that in the in, in the first match so uh that was fun yeah. to see yeah yeah it was okay all in bet by rich oh yeah no i i i i, I didn't have it i was uh uh, but but I appreciate the gamesmanship. Um, <laughs> what was I going to say? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, people just stuck inside, right? I mean, everybody thought Kickstarter was going to. I mean, that, that was why I went to Kickstarter, right? Was because like everybody's like, you know, when, when when the pandemic hit, everybody was terrified. Nobody nobody was putting anything up on Kickstarter because they're like, you know, oh, people are get, people are getting fired, blah 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 blah. And so like Kickstarter had like a lean couple of months, and then this APB went out, being like, look, guys, like there are as many people on now as there have ever been. Uh, and, but you know, there are about half as many projects as there usually are. So like we need projects, we promise there will be people to contribute to them. And so that APB went out and that was when Charlie called me and he's like, dude, if, if, if you're ever going to do this, like now is the time, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and so I sort of grudgingly, you know, slid into it and, and, you know, he was right. It was like, you had people inside, they were like, you know, yeah. They, were, they were they were excited to to fucking read consume anything right and uh, yeah it's like you, you can only like watch so much tv and, and movies and some you know it's like i think it like weirdly kind of helped because it's like something different to read something you know something cool so yeah it's, it's kind of funny and, and what one thing i didn't realize that someone was telling me that like you know there have been a lot more um like uh retailer variants lately you know as far as like covers go okay and like uh what someone was telling me is like part of the reason behind that is because like a lot of stores kind of shifted to uh or or embraced like doing mail order you know or or ordering over the web because because they weren't open yeah so basically um so if they have a web store, it helps to have a product that's like a little bit unique. You know what I mean? Like maybe it's the same book, but maybe you've got like their own cover or yeah. something they can push. So it actually, I never really had, had thought of that before, but it made total sense when, when somebody laid it out for me. Yeah. Well, I guess like, I mean, creators are like, our, our creators are variant crazy, right? I mean, so mm-hmm. um yeah, yeah. I, know, I know some books like come out with like 
seven or eight or, or more. Like I don't really play that game, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, you, you know, so I, I, my, my last book was with source point and source point does this, um, uh, source point does this retailer variant program, particularly for their number ones, you know? And so, mm-hmm. so, so yeah, there were like, I don't know, eight or 10, um, eight or 10 retailers that had their own variant of issue one. And, 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 and that was pretty cool, you know, because I mean, your issue one yeah. is important, right. You know, and, and, uh, and um, so to see all these, and they got really good artists, you know, and so just to see these other people, like their, their, uh, their takes on it, um, you know, it, it, it was mostly, it was mostly great. I mean, it was 90, 95% great. Like there were, you know, there, there were artists that like, you know, they kind of, they kind of didn't read the book and then they would just do something like wacky, mm-hmm. you know, and, <laughs> and, and I'd be like, you know, I, I was trying to have input on this stuff, but it's like, I'm going through source point who's going through a retailer who then has to c- communicate with the artist a, a lot of the time. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And so that doesn't work, but it's like, the, the, there was one where it was like, I have, <coughs> I, I have two female characters, like two distinctly different female characters in the book. And this artist just drew like a, um, just drew like a hybrid, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's on the fucking cover. And I'm like, uh, guys, this like this isn't a character in my book. And I was like, yeah. what are you talking about? It's the girl in the leather jacket. And it's like, okay, well, yes, this this girl is wearing a leather jacket, but um but but yeah, she has the other girl's hair and the <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was like it was just fucking crazy. And everybody was like all pissed and miffed at me because I was uh <laughs> because I because I, I was, was like, good. was that the like the one that looked really all tech like? Well, I I, 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 don't want to call out the specific cover because I, I don't think that's a good idea. I, I, I mean, it's, it, it is a gorgeous piece of art. Is oh it, no, it's a beautiful it, cover. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Let, let, I mean, let's let's not talk it. about. Yeah, let's not so, talk about uh, this. Let's not talk about the specifics. <laughs> but, but yeah, <laughs> but, but 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 I think you have the right idea uh, without without betraying too much more of the uh, of the information. There. I'm still waiting on one. I got one that was uh, part of their store exclusive deal was getting it slabbed. Oh yeah, and um, I, I still don't think I get that until May. Interesting. Um, but yeah, I ordered it what back in. No summer, spring last year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, spring or summer. So, but um, yeah, there they, they were companies that were supposed to send me. They were supposed to send me a bunch of um, you know, to sign and stuff like that, and they didn't. And um, it's it, it's weird. I mean, I think again, the pandemic is so fucking crazy for everybody right now that I think like. Right. You, you just kind of have to give people some some leeway, right? But yeah. How are you guys feeling about uh, conventions right now? It looks like as of lately, I know New York. Comic Con was kind of the really first big convention to be held this this past year, and with uh, some great success. And I went to the San Diego Comic Con uh, abbreviated one they had over Thanksgiving weekend, and oh, how you know, was that? they're doing all the right things. They're taking all the right steps, keep everyone safe, and um, you know, to in order, you know, to to make that adjustment. I mean. New York was, uh, the layout was completely different. Well, not completely different, but just everything was spaced out a lot more than it was in 2019 uh, when we went, and uh, which was good. It was good for the convention, and, and it seems like that at least the convention circuit and, and communities are seeing, hey, this is what we have to do if we want to be able to keep going on and, and get these things going again. Otherwise... Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we're out of luck in it. And it looks like we're getting in that direction of conventions rolling, sl- sl- you know, starting to roll back out. You know, Seattle had their, uh, their December, weird December invention, uh, December convention um, uh, last month. And I, you know, I know we're getting ready for. Yeah, roll right back out in convention season. Are you guys uh, feeling pretty comfortable with the, the the current environment or with 
uh, what you've seen or heard or maybe even experienced in uh, conventions during this during this uh, pandemic time? Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. I think like as long as um, as long as uh, you know the convention is kind of taking precautions and stuff like that, um, I think I would like feel comfortable. Like I was going to go to New York, I wound up having um, like a little health emergency that made me uh, miss the con, unrelated to COVID, but um, but you know I was I was ready to like be there for um for uh for the whole time so i i you know i love i love going to conventions i i just love like you know kind of even you know even even if it would like wouldn't make any money like it, it's 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 just great to like get out there and like meet people and, and um see friends and you know network and stuff like that which is you know great stuff so i'm, I'm like dying to get back at uh, you know obviously want to be safe but um yeah I miss, I, I i i miss cons big time uh i am you know omicron is obviously going berserk right now right so it's 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 a tough go and um i'm gonna have to be extra careful i have i have a five-year-old who who is in preschool and so we all subscribe to i mean I, you know i'm already very careful but i'm already you know, we're subscribing to like higher standards to keep everyone mm -hmm. in the, in the preschool safe and keep it, you know, everybody sure. at the school and the whole nine yards. And, um, uh, so I have been very careful, you know, and I, I didn't go to the, I didn't go to the San Diego, uh, event because it was on Thanksgiving weekend, you know, like I don't, I'm not going to leave my family during that, but I've been, there are things that I could have gone to that I, I didn't because it like, it just didn't, feel right yet um and i'm kind of waiting for it to feel right you know um, hey, and that's okay i felt that way when uh portland uh, rose city comic con was going to do theirs it was a little earlier than i wanted it was kind of towards the end of summer <laughs> it, rich loves that button uh yeah i don't i, I, don't, I don't have I, I, I don't i don't have the the goods to oblige you there but i i, I, I Oh. But, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I mean, if, it, I think that's the important thing is that you need to feel comfortable because it, I think if one thing that this has shown us is that we need to be looking at how we're being taken care of, how we're being protected. Um, and I, you know, I definitely think the convention organizers, you know, have the best intentions for, you know, all these guests and attendees. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, it, it's definitely down to a personal experience, a personal preference. If, if you're comfortable yet in mm -hmm. uh, putting yourself in that situation, it's also really hard to like plan ahead, you know, because like most cons, like they need to kind of have everything settled like months and months in advance. But you don't know what the landscape's going to look like. Yeah, sure. Like, like, uh, back in, I remember back in like, you know. August or whatever, you know, you're talking about like this time of year, like, oh yeah, we, you know, we'd already be like behind it already, but like we're not because there was a new strain. And that's like, who knows? Like, there might be like, you know, next, right. you know, like San Diego is like supposed to, you know, be back to be back to normal in July. In July, we might have like, I don't know, the Omega variant or something. Who knows? Yeah. The Mataba variant. <laughs> But Brian, are you are you out in LA? Wait, what's that? Are you out in LA? Yeah, yeah, I'm in, I'm in Los Angeles. Where are you? Uh, I'm I'm uh, I grew up in New York, but I live in New Jersey now, but still fairly close to New York City. So, no, oh, cool. Yeah, New York Comic Con is kind of like my yeah home, hometown town. I, I, uh, yeah, I, I lived in New York for, uh, I don't know, you know, year and a half or so, like kind of off and on. I, uh, I was out there. I, I worked for Martin Scorsese for half a minute. I worked for Hal Hartley for a little while. Uh, did a lot of artwork in New York back in the day. Um, uh, I mean, I love it. If, uh, I, I mean, I said for the longer, it took me a while to find my LA. LA is so big that if you can't find your LA, there's something wrong with you. Right. But, um, but it has everything, but it was like, New York was very much my speed. And I said forever that like, oh, if I could, if I could do what I'm doing 
you know, in New York, uh, uh, I would do it in a second, but it was like the film business changed so much that you kind of had to be here if you wanted to do specifically what I was doing. And, um, uh, and so, so yeah, I mean, I, I could never, I could never make it. In, I, I, you know, obviously like New York proper is so fucking expensive right now. I don't know that no, no LA isn't much, isn't much better, but, um, uh, yeah. So like, uh, never made it back out there, but I love it. I mean, New York was I, I, best time of my life. was living in New York. Yeah. I've been out to LA a couple of times, but never like, uh, you know, all for like mostly like vacation and stuff like that. Yeah. In town. But I'm like, yeah, it's like so huge. I don't yeah. I probably haven't even seen like half of it. Yeah, it's massive. It's funny. My uh, uh, I, I, my my film TV stuff I write with a, a partner, and he lives in Santa Monica, kind of by the water. And I, I live in Eagle Rock, which is kind of you know the cool hipster you know uh, part of town. Mm-hmm. And um, and so it's like we're you know we're just we're kind of on opposite sides of Los Angeles. We live in, in the same city technically, but it's like but we might as well you know it might as well be like you and I. You know what I'm saying? We're just we're we're so like you know it's like it's like an hour in the car to get to each other you know so like at least hour and a half sometimes um so it's funny i mean it's like uh we got really good at working over you know zoom or fucking telephone whatever it was but uh particularly we both both have kids now but uh but yeah big fucking place man (laughs) yeah he's high keeps it alive yeah Board pairs on the river. Some chicken nugget or a chicken nugget sandwich, or some spring rolls like we had at China. Right. Could be it. Could be it. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> That's there it. All right. Grand takes it home. Ace queen. Yeah. Oh man, that was a grind. But it was a uh, it was good good conversation. It's so hard to like have a meaningful discussion. Like I'm 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 really interested in it. And in, 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 in all the I, I was so much more interested in the exchange going on that it's hard to like play and and. Carry well, and that's conversation. and that's part of what I was I was hoping yeah. to bring into it. Like I've oh. I watch a lot of different interviewers from different all sorts of different media and stuff like that. Like I'll watch like hot ones, and it's like I'm you know as they're like eating chicken wings and then spices take over and it's like you know it's that distraction and, and it's just so i knew that this this game itself you know texas hold'em can be very you know strategic and you know you should be i mean if you're if you're playing this at a card table or for money online you would be in it intently this is where all your focus yeah. is and yeah. you start adding that little so I, i'm just I just wanted to see what that dynamic would be like to uh, just kind of yeah, sit yeah. around and chat, you know, various things about comics with uh, with you guys. So uh, I thank you guys for both playing in this quarterfinal uh, matchup. Rich, I'm sorry to you being knocked okay. out this round. Uh, <laughs> you know what though, you, you, you uh, I think what we were at like sixty or seventy hands. So I mean, you definitely, you definitely. Um, Made Ryan work for it. Uh, Ryan, congratulations. You'll be moving on to the next round and to the semifinals. Uh, yeah, great time, Rich. It's good talking yeah, to you. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. And good luck next round. Well, there you have it, folks. The second quarterfinal match is in the books with Ryan Grant advancing to the semifinals. Check with us next Saturday, February 5th, with Caden Phoenix taking on Kenny Aiken on Pop Cold HQ After Dark's Cards with Comic Creator.